I want Honorable Elachi to react to this next story. The war on graft has now taken a political turn, with a section of MPs accusing the government of unfairly targeting Deputy President William Ruto to derail his 2022 presidential bid. The leader is also accusing some powerful individuals in government of shielding corruption cartels. As Stephen Leto gives us that story. After dominated political gathering Sunday. <laughs> In a veiled reference to the deputy president, a section of Rift Valley politicians claimed the fight against corruption was unfairly targeting one of their own. We want this corruption to be done without political witches. During the grilling of Kenya Pipeline Director Joe Sang, with a section of MPs claiming he is being unfairly targeted, Rift Valley MPs have also accused the government of targeting genuine traders in the investigation into the National Cereals and Produce Board, in which the businessmen pocketed 1.9 billion shillings at the expense of local farmers. Several investigations have targeted the energy sector, where Charles Keter, an ally of Deputy President William Ruto, was in charge before the reconstitution of the cabinet last year. And in Nyeri, Senate Majority Leader Kipchumba Murkomen warned looters hiding behind the president and his deputy that their days are numbered. <laughs> Corrupt. Those who want to bring politics into the fight against corruption. Let us also tell them that corruption is individual. In Nairobi County, Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja led a section of MPs for a church service at AIC Langata, where they faulted attempts to shield individuals implicated in graft. There has been claims that Health Cabinet Secretary Cecily Kariuki was in charge of the Youth Affairs Ministry when billions were looted from the NYS has been spared in the anti-graft purge. Some MPs are now pushing for her impeachment. And since we're in the day of handshake, I couldn't wa to believe. Hakuna mwizi wa NASA, even if it is my colleague, funga. Kama mtu wa meiba, funga. So what Kenyans can see, that you do not get away with it. The government has also been accused of sparing Kirinyaga Governor Anne Waiguru, who was at the helm when graft allegations at the NYS first came up in 2016. <laughs> Kakamega and Kisumu County, a section of opposition legislators rooted for the scrapping of the National Youth Service, saying it had become a cash cow for corrupt individuals. NYS, if you live in Bali, if you kila county, if you NYS, your pesa ipeleko kila county, ikipotea, inapotelea hapa kakamega. Because we have seen some politicians making a lot of noise that their people are being targeted. I do not think we need to allow politicians to start diverting our attention. Public money must be taken care of. Everybody who is corrupt must be taken to court. A similar fight was on in Bomet County. Lakini for sure, tukienda pamoja na watu wa western. Tukienda pamoja sijui zioni kama tunaweza kukosa ikiti. The leader spoke during the ninth anniversary of the death of Laboso's late sister, Lona Laboso. Stephen Leto, Citizen TV, Nairobi. So, Honorable Lachi, what, what are your views? Add, add your voice to <laughs> those of several of mm. your colleagues. Mm. You know, um, first, it's very unfortunate for the president and the deputy president. Because when people are lobbying for jobs, we lobby per our tribes. You know, mm. you say my tribe has not gotten this, and you lobby and you lobby. And then the, pre the deputy president and the president must ensure you have brought in these people to do their work. So now when we come to such crisis, I think it is always good now to remove the two. We cannot start saying it's because I am a lawyer, I'm a Kalenjin, I'm a Kikuyu. Definitely you are because you lobbied for the job, they gave you the job. At that time, they were not looking at you as individual, as the Kalenjin, as lawyer. They looked at you as you have the qualifications and credentials to do this work. So now when it comes now the opposite that we are now seeing the corruption that is coming in, you must carry the cross. So you can't come back and now say, because I'm from the, ba uh, the, the backyard of my president, that's why. I mean, I haven't seen uh, uh, anyone complain on that. So I want to ask also my brothers, let us not pull in that. Mm. Don't, don't start uh, putting issues that are not there at all.
I think the Deputy President is very clear. And I believe all of them are willing. The, how this thing ends, it has to end for us to see our country move. I think that should be the spirit of all the politicians. Now, if you know, and I've said, I started by saying what? In this country, the law is clear. Anyone can do business with government. It does not say when you are a politician, where you are here. What the law says, do not come into an inst I cannot be at Nairobi County and immediately I find my husband is there, my brother. No, 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 no. It is ridiculous. And I know many Kenyans who think it's a joke. It's wrong. So, but you have other people who will do the business. Mm. For us, the problem with us, when you see something good, you want a wife to be there, you want this. And then when they come for you, you start saying now you're being haunted. Mm. But it was a family thing. And if your directors are your wife and, and you have been there, you, you've already breached the law. And, and th that is very clear in our Procurement Act. In our Chapter 6, I mean, those are some of the ethics and values that were being challenged with Chapter 6. And therefore, let, you find that people do business. Your brothers will be sitting on the very serious institutions that determine some of these regulations. So you're a, benefit, a beneficiary, and then you don't want to do the right thing. Why? Because you feel, I am at this level. Who will question me? So uh, the president is right as he says. Let him not shield anyone. Let the deputy president not shield anybody. And by there, I keep on saying, for 2022, God knows better than we do. Let us not provoke God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right now. Mm -hmm. Let us not provoke God right now. He knows who will be the president of this country. Mm. He knows. And for us Kenyans, I think we are a very unique country. We've learned lessons mm. that you can't force this thing. That's a very yeah, if we in interesting, it, interesting statement you know? considering your party has given us a roadmap. Yes, so the roadmap is so there. To say this and <laughs> God knows <laughs> in our roadmap, uh -huh. yes. we say by the tongue, mm -hmm. <laughs> we claim and we pray that our deputy president will take over. Mm -hmm. But God, and my deputy president is a very prayerful man. He knows God is the answer of this thing. And if God has said it is him, even if we play all these games we're playing, it will come to end with him. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. It will God, come that, to that, end that with that him. That has taken a new <laughs> God, God. church has carried on on to Monday. All yeah. of Mathuki yeah. coming yeah. also. Let, let, me, let, me, let me say this. You see, if there is any legacy that this ancient thing who can live for this country mm. is uh, fighting craft and corruption, I tell you, and I think that is what one of the issues I think um, they said was tackled, was agreed before they shook hands. And you can, you can see even coalition and leaders even agree now to come together and say, yes, for the sake of this country. It's not about peace alone, but it's about justice. It's about fighting corruption. If we don't fight corruption, if leaders don't come together and agree that we must fight corruption, we're not going anywhere as a country. And I say this, even what you're calling the big four, the big four will not happen if corruption is not handled. And I think it will be in the interest of the leadership of this country, starting with the president himself, to say for, his, for the big four to work, that it should be on the work on the platform of a clean country fighting corruption. I'm telling you this because even, even some of our cooperating partners, donors, will not be very keen now to work with us mm. if some of these graft uh, issues are not sorted Continue. out. So, and, that is, and that is common sense. So I think as he comes, he should even come and lead this war himself as a president and say he doesn't want side shows. Because once he leaves these other political leaders, they'll politicize and say, oh, this is being targeted, our tribe, our community, I don't know what, my kinsmen, and where are we taking the country? So I think if there's a legacy, even himself as a president, leave alone even the Anshak, it is to ensure that indeed fighting corruption works and it must be seen working. He should, he should, he should and he can. He has the capacity, he has the machinery, he has the political goodwill. Now that the political temperatures that were in the country are no more, it is now time for him to sit and say, I will not tolerate corruption from anyone. And you should not shoot anyone. And I think that is actually that the buck stops with him as the head of state. The buck stops with him as the head of state. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned the big focus. I want to take you to page 14 of the Daily Nation. Um, of the cartoon there this morning, 
is of uh, contractors in the form of, uh, is that a rat or a mouse? I don't know what, <laughs> which word to use there to best describe that picture, but in a suit with the face of a rat, um, <laughs> with the hand around the government saying it's always, oh, there we go, always a pleasure mm. working with you. And uh, the document they are studying is the big four. But the contractors are meanwhile slipping their hands into the pockets of the government and removing what looks like money or some sort of documents, it's probably money in that case as well. Mm -hmm. So th that quite relates, Honorable yeah. Matuki, with yeah. what you're saying. Honorable yeah. Wino, come in as well and give us yeah. your thoughts even as we look at this cartoon. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really what is going on. So that's a, re a real depiction. For example, um, this is the first time, uh, many times it has happened also, where you find uh, contractors or suppliers, supplies nothing and they are paid for everything. And those who have not uh, been paid are real contractors. But uh, Wahiga, the effect of corruption is far-reaching. For example, we have uh, unprecedented um, unemployment among you young people who have really gone to school. And when you have gone to school and you have no job, these young people are being lost into uh, very unhealthy activities, some drug abuse and all that. And that can go down towards generation. In this country, we still have uh, maternal deaths, standing at 388 per 100,000 live births. Mothers were expecting babies because our hospitals are not fully equipped. The primary facilities have no uh, enough staff. But we are talking of losing a third of uh, our annual budget, over 600 billion mm -hmm. lost through graft. So it, to me, it is a serious matter that should not be taken seriously. That's why I said in the beginning that the president has to stay his foot down, regardless of this rhetoric politics, to make sure uh, this animal is laid. If that is done and everybody become honest, the punishment is severe, nobody will, will, will start joking around with Kenyans. Because we have been in this circle before, people doing so bad things and then they start politicizing and then they retreat to their cocoons in, in, in those uh, communities and then, uh, you know, it is forgotten and swept under the carpet. Not this time. I, I believe all of us should stand firm. Let everybody carry their own cross. Uh, we are now in the budgeting process in the parliament, and we are allocating monies. And mm -hmm. we, we stood and say, uh, corruption starts here. There, there are some, some monies put in some quarters that has no project. It's, it's like that, just like that cartoon. So we say, let us start uh, preventing corruption from the budgeting process. Don't allocate money where it is not due. The big four, I'm happy uh, health care is one of them. We have been fighting for that for long. But remember, our percentage is still below 6%. Many countries have gone to over 10%. Mm -hmm. If we had that 600 billion put in healthcare system to raise that percentage to be more than maybe 10%, we will save lives, we will reduce disease burden, and the economy will grow. So I think this is a very serious thing that uh, all quarters should fight, be it legislatures, uh, executive, or, or, or the judiciary system, so that we can leave it behind us. Okay. Honorable Lachi, I want to give you one minute because we need to take a break, maybe just to, to wrap this up for us. What are your thoughts, your final thoughts on everything that they've said? I think my final thought, especially on the big four, is, um, as I said, I know when we started this NYS saga, I said if we are not careful, one of the scenarios would be to kill the big four. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you find yourself uh, so much enrolled in mm -hmm. many other issues until you forget the legacy of the president. But for me, I think if the president's legacy will be I indeed finished corruption in this country, then be it. Because then uh, the big four will still rise mm. to mm. another level. Because he needs the money to do the big four. Mm. He needs uh, uh, support. There was a time when I was in the Senate and I used to come so much and I kept on having this cry. Now if you want to deal with corruption, don't just deal it at this level. Don't just talk about it because the PS does not do documents. There's a process. Can we start with the whole structure? If you want to now say you are cleaning it and, and, and dealing with it. Mm. The whole structure from where you start the process of this tender process. Do you know there are some people in this country, that is why you are seeing that cartoon, where they know even before the tender has been put in the paper, they know that this tender is going to come in this paper 
and this is how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So now I'm looking for the engineers to do for who give me the specs. Can we now put this thing online and deal with the, some and see whether the system can work? Where I fill my tender forms online, you don't need to see me. You will evaluate me and you will show me how you've evaluated all the others. Why have we lost? And I am not supposed to bring you a file that mm. is a hard copy. Because you know what they do? Put they will remove the documents so you don't have your bond. Mm. I don't know, you don't have. Mm. Let us fill all of us. And in the first round, everyone is able to open this portal and see we have filled 15 of us and all of us have submitted. Where I have not submitted a document, the red, the flag shows me and shows everyone that this document, this company did not do. Then we move to the next level now in terms of we've all submitted, we've all passed that level mm -hmm. one. Level two now is where now we look at your pricing and everything. And at that time, we had seen the pricing. So there's no change of pricing or anything on it. Then we see how it can work. Can we digitize this mm -hmm. process also? The UN has done it. Every, I mean, big institutions do mm. it so well yeah. in Europe and that's why we don't have a lot of those conflict and going back to procurement officers pro the PPO I don't know where you find people running all over because they know you have decided to deny me this tender I'm gonna kill it when I go to the authority of procurement I'm, you know we ha and kill some of those institutions mm -hmm. they are the ones that have got more graft because companies know I'll go there I'll give the money and they'll return the tender back to me so kill some of these institutions, parliament. There are too many. You see, one of the things also we put our country into crisis mm -hmm. is you have institution one and two and three. So many pro bureaucracy, the people take advantage of that process and they use it to do evil Some things. are actually meant to have been merged by now, but they're still, we that still hasn't happened. Them. We, mm. If, if yeah. we put that to be digita digitized, do we mm. really need another institution to come and look at? In mm -hmm. fact, Parliament will have it easier when you are uh, asking a company, why are we mm -hmm. in this crisis? Mm -hmm. You will just look at how the process started. And uh, you're actually, able to get. Uh, you should, should even uh, review the PFM Act. Yeah. Uh, you know, a pen uh, costing 200 shillings is bought now 5,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what then also review and tell government yeah. that we know, yes, you collect revenue, but can we agree? that I can have a tracker and in 60 days you are paying the supplier. In si and if you're not, earlier before then, if there's an issue, mm -hmm. he is. just receives an email saying, we apologize, we will be paying you on this date because on this because date, this, this, is, and this has happened. Okay. To, to, to try and just... Remove the ways in which, because that yes. bureaucracy, I believe, is what is And what that is where the 10%, mm -hmm. the tenderpreneurs, yes, the 20%. Yeah. And can we have a law of lobbyists? Mm -hmm. So if it is 2%, it is 2% yeah. of the whole yeah. contract. Mm -hmm. Then now you sit on a table and they just tell you 10%, 20%. And Kenyans are very interested. They don't care how the project will end. Whether 10 years you will be having seats on, on standard gauge railway, there's no seat, it is already dry, or even maybe already it's starting to pin. 